I endorse the Danny app. She can make eBay great again. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Niche to Profit. So you saw that little, little endorsement I got right there as you know, before we actually started the show. And, um, and so I, Scott here, my director, did not understand the reference. So I just want to make sure you guys all know that that's, that's my little Trump guy there. Um, <laughs> he studied to play that part very, very hard. So uh, he was so proud of himself with that. Um, Basically, you guys saw the topic I put out there that we're going to talk about Trump and what he has to do with your business. And there is a very good reason I did that. And I've gone, I've gone and looked at my little statistics and it worked. It did exactly what the point was that I want to bring to you guys today. We are not going to talk about politics. So let me just say that. I just wanted to get you guys here. And by saying Trump... I got people here. I got people to click over and look at the event that I normally wouldn't have gotten. Or maybe they wouldn't have been to the show. So we're going to talk about that because we are going to talk about marketing and ways you can use like current events and trending stuff to pump up your profits. We are also going to look at some of those pesky little items that just are not moving off the shelves in our Why Won't They Buy segment. And I'm going to show you a little auction purchase that I made recently and uh, what I'm going to do with that. We're going to look at some hot sales of the week and uh, whatever else we come up with to talk about because I have no guests today. You're my guest. You bring the questions to the live chat. That's the great thing about being here in the live chat is I can put my glasses on and actually see what you're saying. (laughs) Yes, I I broke them out, okay? I just, it's time to admit I can't see anymore. It's a terrible thing. Yes, thank you. It has to happen to all of us. All right, so let's talk about marketing. Let's talk about what is going on uh, with Donald Trump, not his politics, but what is happening in the world of searches and everybody talking about it. I mean, usually you see uh, in an election year, you know, the the one side talks about their candidates and the other side talks about theirs. And there's a little bit of crossover and bashing and all that. But this is like, I have a friend who is a journalist who is, is so mad at his fellow journalists for, you know, giving attention Uh, when he doesn't think it's due. And the thing is, what Trump has done that I want you to take note of, he isn't just out there running for the presidency. He is building a brand as he's doing this. He has a very, very well thought out strategy for how he's getting out there. And you will see him repeating the same words and saying the same things. and, And not that he's disingenuous or not. I'm not going to go there. Some think he is, some think he's not. But the fact of it is he's being so consistent. He has started this movement of let's make America great again. That was the reference in my little opening video there, by the way, you know, just saying. Um, It's all about make America great again. And the big thing is he is pushing on people's pain points, no matter what side of the fence people are on. He's pushing those pain buttons. And that, my friends, is how marketing goes viral. Because everybody out there has something in their life that affects them day to day. It's why they buy. It's why they shop. He's so cute, isn't he? He's much, much cuter than Trump. Um, And we did get that wig on Amazon, by the way. 
<laughs> you can have last minute ideas of doing something. And oh, let me order a wig. I love it. Two day shipping. Um, but back to my point. So here's the thing, you guys. You cannot be afraid to get out there and take advantage of what's happening in the real world. And I don't mean take advantage of people. I don't mean lie or cheat or do anything uh, immoral. It's, But it is a marketing point. You need to be in front of people. And the way you do that is you come up in searches. And I, I'll tell you, there's a, there's a little site that I go to. Let's see if I can pull it up. And oh, t- duh, it's right in front of me. Um, it's what's trending.com. There's a couple different ways you can see this stuff. This is one that I use, and it's going to show you what's really trending, what's popular. Th- they get their information off of search engines, so they're gathering data based on what people are typing in and searching. And I'm telling you, f- Facebook has this stuff down too. You know, you can find an interest on Facebook and see how many people are are geared into that. Um, but really, if you find those things that you can use and then twist it around so it makes sense for your business, use it. People are searching. Then here's the other piece. So you come up in a search, you got to have something compelling that makes them want to click. You'll notice this week I do an event on Facebook for the for the show every single week and I pretty much use the same graphic. I didn't this week. I used a picture that I got legally and paid for and oh, you know what? Let's see do I still have I don't know if I still have Facebook up on here. I can I can probably pull that up and show you. In just a The trick is that I have to keep talking so we don't have dead air and think and type all at the same time. I can do this. It's like yeah, it's like, you know, rubbing your belly and chewing gum and all that stuff. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. And well, we almost got it here. It's a very slow computer. It's a borrowed computer. Because if you were here last week, you may have noticed that... Um, oh, come on. Come on right here. My, yeah, that's that's pretty much what happened to my computer last week. It died and fried, and it's uh, it's still waiting to have its proper burial, but it's definitely going to be buried. Okay. Let's see if I can. All right. So I think we can pull this up, right? Yes, yes. Can we show them? So I went and I bought this picture on one of the sites where you can go buy a picture so that you can use, and I put my own little addition to it. I went over to a site called canva.com. Great little free site. And I put the little text buttons and just, you know, made it about me. It just made it about me. Um, But the thing was that I used the word Trump in the title of my show. I put a picture of Trump that comes up, you know, when people are scrolling through the timeline, it makes people stop and go, oh, what now? Because that's a trending thing. It's like a train wreck, you guys. Even if you don't want to see it, you have to stop and look. It's happening. I'm not saying he's a train wreck. Gosh, I got to be careful. Yeah, I don't, nobody like twist my words here. Because um, I know I got I got friends on both sides of this this whole political fence. And I'm just I'm just staying right down the middle here with this show today. Um, but the point is, I got more response from this event um, promotion then I have the last 10 shows. It's crazy. It's crazy. And and that's what will happen in your business as well. And you guys know I'm a big, big proponent, pro, promonent, proponent of blogging. See, I was already like getting ready for that blogging word. A big proponent of blogging. And the reason is blogging is very, very current stuff to Google. Like you put fresh content that's related to the other content that you're putting up and it's consistent. And then you got people clicking over and reading and all that, that really, really boosts you in Google searches. So you add that, you know, with something that's relevant that people are searching for. Oh, look, your blog page comes up and you guys might've noticed this. Now, my site, we don't even want to talk about the mess that is my site right now. When I was blogging, 
Um, you guys might remember a little movie that came out back in February called Fifty Shades of Grey. Another very controversial thing going on. Uh, lots of talk about it, lots of searches, lots of, you know, just tons of stuff out there. And so I wrote a couple of blog articles at the Fifty Shades of eBay. Anytime you can get that, you know, Fifty Shades in there, boom, people were compelled to come over and read. Some people wanted to come over and read so that they could, you know, write something not so nice to me. Um, that happens too. It's okay. it's all good. Uh, but the thing is, kind of gearing in on those things that are happening and that are on people's minds. And I know this, uh, you know, there's people that have trouble with this, but when somebody famous dies, especially if it's an artist or somebody who wrote a book or a famous actor that's in, you know, some movie that is out there, I, write about it, write about it. If, if it, fits in your niche let, let me let's like just put that in there too i mean if you don't sell anything to do with star wars and never are going to maybe you don't want to write about you know a star wars actor dying that's really bad we don't want to think about a star wars actor dying do we no i don't know why that one came to my mind uh but i hope you're getting what i'm saying here is so but on the other hand star wars is coming out in a couple of months and this is something that's, I mean, you've got your hardcore Star Wars people out there that are searching, they're commenting, they're finding anything they can about Star Wars because they just love it. So if you write a blog post that has some reference to, you know, Yoda, I mean, there's lots of stuff you can write about Yoda that has really nothing to do about Star Wars, but can be about your business. It can be about some other stuff that you sell. Um I have some clients that have a store that it, everything's about fun. You know, there it's fun sational finds, and good golly, they can they can you know they, I don't know that they whether or not they have Star Wars stuff in there, but that's fun stuff. They could do like a little cartoon with you know some Yoda thing or sabers, and I, can you tell I'm like really up on the movies? But use it, use it to your advantage because that gets people over to your business, which is what it's all about. Uh, after we come back from uh, a little commercial, we're going to talk about how this applies to your niche and how if it's not associated with your niche, you can still use it. So we will be right back after this. Millions of online sellers are looking for one identity to use in thousands of platforms. E-Rated manages your reputation by importing unlimited social media, marketplace, and behavioral data. It reveals your cross-platform performance, compares it with competitors, and calculates your e-worth. And it gives you the tools you need to improve sales and find room to grow. Discover your e-worth and your own reputation shareyourreputation.com and just real quick they just got uh, some integration with Shopify and your own WordPress website just saying if you haven't gone over or got your account yet you want to go do that all right marketing marketing so here's the thing guys you can have the absolute best products in the world and if you do no marketing you're going to get no sales. Now, eBay does some marketing for you. It's already driven the traffic over to eBay and brought people in there to go shopping. But many of you are also experiencing the pain that it ain't what it used to be. eBay used to be the only game in town, and it used to be where everybody went. And last spring, not, not 2014, spring of 2014, they had a couple of little issues that sent... Hundreds of thousands of people away from the site. Um, that number one was a security breach. That was big, big news. Um, they made everybody change their password, which I never like. This one gets me because um, I went and I actually did an interview on Fox Business News about this, and they had this expert uh, security analyst guy on there, and I didn't know that this breach had happened about three months prior before they let us know, right? So pretty much that whole um, 
change your password was like, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, that was like closing the barn doors after you let the cows out already kind of thing. It, it was, it was silly. Um, the whole password change was, was a whole CYA kind of thing. Sorry. If anybody was watching from eBay, got to call them as I see them. Uh, and what it ended up doing was making a whole lot of people not come back to the site. Because anytime you make something a hassle, you are going to lose people. And e-commerce is becoming way too easy that if anything stands in the way of making that buy, people just aren't going to do it. They're just, they're, they're going to go someplace else. They're going to go click on the next. I'm telling you, that is why free shipping is so, so effective because doing math in your head and adding those two things together is an extra step. They got to really want it or your price has to be really, really competitive in order for them to make that buy. Uh, So eBay did this, which was bad in and of itself. And then Google did this wonderful update and Google and eBay were not playing well together for quite some time. And and that was really uh, another nail in the coffin, um, so to speak. It's not dead yet, but it was getting there. And I have it from from very good inside information that eBay was teetering on the brink, uh, let's just say. Now, all that being said, those of you who have hung in there and kept up with things, many of you have built your niche, which that's why I have been so focused on this with my appsters over this, this last year is with niche, you can overcome whatever the heck else is going on with search engines and casinis and, and all this stuff because you are driving your own traffic based on knowing who you're marketing to. You're talking to that customer that's going to be interested in not just that one thing you're listing, but in everything that you're selling or close to everything. It's, it's like, you know, you're walking through a mall and you see the bed, bath and beyond type shop and you, you go in there. Why? Because you like frou-frou bath gel, right? Okay, so there's one product. You go in there and you walk by. Oh, and they've got these little bath fizzy things. Oh, oh, look at this. And then they got a shampoo over here. And before you know it, you've found about 10 different things that you want to buy because everything was kind of related and appealing to your senses and your emotions. And your online store is no different. You need to pull them in to your virtual store with whatever that one item is. And then as they're looking and seeing what else you sell, they're going, oh, I could add that. Oh, I want that too. And that, and that, and that's how it works. Um, Just had somebody post over on the Danny App Facebook group that they had a customer come in and they ended up buying $570 worth of stuff because they were niched. And, and that is really what I want you guys to get is that not that you have to be niched. You can sell stuff. You can be an online yard sale and you can sell stuff all over the place. But it's when you really zero in on your customer and you can market to that customer, uh, both in, you know, direct emails, like after you've gotten the sale, somebody buys something, you now have their email address. You can now Send them a little invitation to stay on your list. Be one of your, you know, club. I have utter, utterly good, the utterly good club. Um, it's basically a loyalty program for my returning customers. But here's the thing. I don't have to send them back to eBay to buy stuff. They're my customer now. I have phone numbers of dealers all over this country that when I get certain items in, I can pick up the phone and have that item sold. I mean, that's what you can do with a niche. You get a list of people who will come back and buy from you over and over again. So it isn't just about that one hit and run sale. It's that you're going to list some more stuff. They're going to like that stuff too. And they're going to come back and buy more from you. So that's that's why this niche thing is so important. And before we started the show, um, there was some talk in the uh, chat about trying to narrow in on a niche and, and how niche is too niche. And I'm telling you guys, sometimes it's, it is down to like 
this tight of a niche and you can have a million dollar business. But you have to do your homework. You have to do your research. You have to know how many buyers are out there searching for that. And I wanted to bring up another little site that I have. Um, if you guys have not gone over and got a Merchant Words uh, account, um, you know what? You need to send me a little email because I can get this to you for uh, nine bucks a month. So don't pay full price. Talk to me. Talk to me. Anyway, it's merchantwords.com. And basically, this is going to tell you how many people are searching for any given thing. So uh, let's just, because we made the theme of the show, Mr. Trump. Let's see. How many people are typing in Trump? So it tells you every single variation. Now we want to see it. I think we can sort by. Doo -doo 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 -doo. This is unsorted. Let's go highest search volume. Donald Trump, 1,240,000 searches per month right now on Amazon. How, this is just Amazon, but Amazon really is a gauge of e-commerce out there. It tells you what people are looking for. Um, so you got Ivanka Trump, 895,000. This is just, this is amazing to me. You know, even if you get down to something where it's only, you know, 50,000 searches a month, if you get a little piece of that pie, that's still some good money. I mean, these are just searches. Just think if you had a thousand people come over to buy a product that you had for 20 bucks, let's say only 10% of them buy, you do the math. I don't want to do that math. It hurts my head. But the point is, if you've got something hot, then you can niche really, really tight. But be careful, it isn't just a trend. It's something that is sustainable for a period of time because um, there are just some trending items. But, you know, come up, they say build a better mousetrap. You know, you build a better mousetrap, so to speak, and you build your customer base. You can sell just that better mousetrap for quite some time before you have to innovate and get something else or find something that goes with the mousetrap. A really good example of this. Ah, I love this. I love this. How many of you know about the Dollar Shave Club? It came out of the blue and it was, I mean, they compete on price and you sign up and you get a month's worth of razor blades for like... You can get the dollar version, but really, I think most people upgrade to the $4 version, which is a little bit better blade, right? So $4 a month, and all they were selling was razor blades. That's it. But man, oh man, they knew who their customer was. They knew the language to use out there in their marketing and social media. And I don't know what their subscription base is, but I know it's huge. And I watch... They come out with new products here and there, and they'll send you a sample. Like, But you have to go over. This is so brilliant. You have to go over and click that you want the free sample. Guess what they just did when you did that? They know now that you're going to have this sample product in your hands, and now they can do a little bit of naggy stuff to see how you liked it. Did you use it? Oh, and by the way, here's a special you know, to order your first uh, shipment of this and, and attach it on. It's just, it's just brilliant marketing. Um, so can you be too niched? And not when it's something like that. I mean, that's all they're selling. They're selling razor blades and stuff that goes with people who use razor blades, you know, the guys. So it's just, it, it's just awesome stuff. Can your niche be too wide? Yeah. Yeah, and that's what a lot of you sellers out there are doing is you are trying to boil the ocean with a Bic lighter. You can't do it. You cannot make everybody happy. You cannot appeal to everybody. You have to zero in on a certain customer type. You know, I, I've done mine. I sell hundreds of different products, but I know who is shopping in my store and I know what caliber of things they're looking for. So I can't go and start listing um, used clothing. That w If my customers that come over and shop from me on, on a repeated basis start coming over and seeing that I'm listing stuff that they have to scroll through to get to the stuff they want, they're going to get bored. 
They're going to be less inclined to come back and see what I newly listed next time. So you have to be really careful with that and make sure everything is is not boring to them, right? When I'm shopping for clothes, I want to be able to go and find clothes that are, appeal to me. I So some of you know about Goodwill versus Savers. I don't shop used clothing in Goodwill. It is a pain in the butt. Savers? They've got it sorted by size, by type. I can go right to what I want. They're like, they're speaking my language. I go there and I spend hundreds of dollars on used clothing. And I, and I say that because you can do the same thing in your store. Make sure your categories are appealing to the type of customer that's coming over, especially with clothes and shoes. People want to search by their size. And then they want to narrow it down to, but I'm looking for, you know, a a pair of pumps or um, a pair of sandals. You know, just just remember, you guys, people are lazy. Just keep that in mind. Cater as much to that as you can as you're setting up your, your shop and doing your marketing. Don't confuse them. Make things really, really easy for them to to make the buy like really clear call to action. Here's what you need to go do. And this will 